The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of the Grand Unified Field Theorem, also called GAGIT, which is an acronym for God Almighty Grand Unification Theorem. To know our future, we must know our past. Introduction. GAGIT is a single equation that expresses the totality of the nature of the universe. It was developed in 1990 by Dr. Gabriel Uyibo, who found inspiration in the teachings of our great ancient Afro-Rakanu, afro, afro or African ancestors who lived along the Happy Valley River system. The Happy Valley River system is now known today as the Nile Valley River system. And over 20,000 years ago, our ancestors formulated a creation theory that is reinforced by modern scientific ideas. And that's what we're gonna explore today in this uh, brief introduction. So to represent this creation theory, we're gonna refer to the following cosmogram, okay, which mirrors what today is called the Big Bang theory of creation. So let's go. So first and foremost, to get a visual idea of the Gagat equation, we're gonna to refer to the primary source called the Shabaka stone, which is a document that is now held in the British Museum of Antiquities. Okay. So on that document, which is a stone tablet, <clears throat> is a description of the creation of the universe in a physical matter. So we can look at this as in ancient African uh, quantum cosmology. Okay. This is ancient African quantum cosmology. Okay. The ancient Afro-Rakanu, African people, referred to, or they symbolize the primordial waters of Nun by these wavy lines. And even you can see the N in the wave if you write it like this, you could see N and another N for Nun. So in scientific terms, Nun represents a unified field of wave energy. Okay. And within the primordial waters of Nun, there were four counterparts or four attributes or four pairs. And I'm, only, I'm gonna talk about uh, four of those, four out of eight of those pairs. The other, the pairs are just the opposites of what I'm gonna talk about. At any rate, within the waters of Nun, they theorized that before the creation of the physical universe or material universe, there was a pre-existing universe. And the attributes that had to pre-exist before the creation of the universe were I'll use the acronym Ankh. And, and Ankh is symbolized as, as, it's the symbol of life. So we can even say this is where all life arose, okay? Amen is the hidden intelligence. Hidden, you could say unseen intelligence or invisible intelligence. Okay, the N, Nun, to elaborate more on Nun, is latent energy or non active or stored energy. Or you could say sleeping energy. Okay. Latent or non active or potentialized energy. Potential meaning stored energy. It's not active, it's, it's dormant, right? It's, it's just, it's sleeping energy. potential energy, right. and then Ka is a formless substance, formless substance. And the H stands for H, which is boundless space or infinite space. And so those are the four attributes that preexisted before 
the coming into being or kepra, we, ancient Africans referred to the African referred to as kepra, coming into being, which is symbolized by the scarab beetle. Okay. Out of the primordial waters of Nun, there rose a quote unquote hill. And our ancient ancestors referred to this as pata. In scientific terms, pata represents the unified force field. So key term force, unified force field of wave energy. And I'm being redundant by design on purpose because I want I want students, audience, viewers to see how these overlap. Okay, we see that Pata is rising out of none. The unified force field of wave energy arises from the unified field of wave energy. And sitting atop of the hill, quote unquote hill which is just a larger wave. You can look at this as these little waves superposition, they concentrate themselves and they make a bigger wave. So this is just a wave. This is a, a unified force field of wave energy. And that in sitting it in this point particle here, ancient Afro-Econo people were referred to as Atum. And Atum, is Afro-Rakanium, giving honor to those who founded science and mathematics in Africa tens of thousands of years ago. Okay. And Afro-Rakanium is the building block of all matter. Moreover, Afro-Arcanium, okay, Atum, right? This represents God's ability to convert or materialize a formless substance into matter. So Atum is the ability of God to convert energy into matter or to materialize from a formless substance. So what Afro-Canium represents is the concentration of said force field, concentration of said force field, okay? Okay, now how does this relate to the Gagat equation? Well, Gagat, is a single equation that expresses the totality of the nature of the universe. Okay. So everything in the universe can be represented or described through this equation. Now, I want to make it clear that mathematics essentially is the description of shapes. We use mathematical equations to describe shapes. So every shape has a mathematical equation associated with it. Like a circle has an equation, a line has an equation, triangles have equations, so on and so curves, which we'll get into more advanced um, ideas about the universe. The universe is, is curved. It's, there, there's a, things don't move in straight lines. Okay. okay. So the equation is expressed as G, Ij comma j equals zero. Okay, we're gonna discuss briefly what each one of these symbols mean. So first and foremost, big G represent God's intelligence, God's intelligence. Okay. This can also represent 
the geometry of time and space. So when we look in the universe, we can define the universe as an unimaginably large space filled with motion. More so, the universe is a, is a geometric structure, a large geometric system, wherein there are shapes that are moving. When we look up at this, we see shapes. When we look around us, we see shapes. So the universe is a geometric uh, environment a geometric structure, a large geometric structure. It's unimaginably large, right? Okay, so God's intelligence, big G. And we can also look at this as um, the ultimate force or the big G represents the unified force field that governs all motion. And that's, that's done through God's intelligence. So this represents uh, God's intelligence to generate, as we see here in the cosmogram, a unified force field from the field of wave energy. So let's just put that here, geometry, as a side note. The geometry of time and space. <clears throat> and this also represents the, uni like I said, the unified force field. The unified force field okay and we'll get deeper into this in following videos what force is what fields are and when you're breaking down the mathematics in a very simplistic way how to understand how to describe shapes using mathematics okay the eye here this represents the latent energy and the formless substance that God uses to build matter or to construct matter. Okay, you can say that this is God's material as Dr. Yibo has uh, coined it. The J here represents space-time coordinates. Okay, and real quick, there's four dimensions of space, time, X dimension, Y dimension, Z dimension. So space time combined, they're inextricably linked. Okay, there's a connection between space time, and we'll talk about that as that becomes more and more as we advance our studies and exploration. The comma here denotes change or coming into being or transformation or kepra, or transformation. And this last J here represents the materialization, materialization process. So in other words, what we see at the top of the cosmogram, the concentration of the unified force field of wave energy, that's the materialized energy or energy that's been materialized. Okay, so we go from, in essence, a superior form of energy or an eternal form of energy or a non-destructible form of energy to a inferior form of energy or a destructible form of energy. But the, the materialization of energy, the superior form of energy is encapsulated within the material structure. So we know that matter comes and goes but that mass is conserved through transformation processes, which brings us to zero, which represents conservation. There's no loss. There's no change. There's no change in the matter, in the energy that comprises the totality of the universe. These are just transformed into one another. And that gets us into the equivalence between energy and mass as described by Professor Einstein's equation. We have the equivalence between mass and energy. Okay, so that gives us a, a brief introduction and overview of the Gagat equation or the God equation, the grand unified field theorem.